Hi everyone, welcome to Angel Conversations and today I am so excited. Our fabulous guest is Elizabeth, who we're just going to call Beth, Elizabeth Lee Crowther. Hello Beth, how are you doing? Hiya Claire, I'm good, thank you. I am so excited to have you on here because usually it's the other way around and it's me being a guest on your fantastic <laughs> radio show, which is called Psychic Beth Spiritual Calling Show. That's um, right. Yeah, which I absolutely love. Um, so, welcome to Angel Conversations. Thank you, Claire. I'm really looking forward to chatting to you today. And I want to say thank you for being such a brilliant guest on a radio show in the past. I know we've had you on a few times. and. Our listeners absolutely love it when you come on because you do some brilliant readings on there. Oh, thank you so much. I always love coming on your show. Um, so would you show us your amazing book and your oracle deck? so people Absolutely, absolutely. I wrote this book, uh, Life by Numbers, and it's in my maiden name, Elizabeth Barber which I know is a little bit confusing, but if anybody does want to have a look on Amazon, that's what you need to type in. And I wrote that in 2017. Um, and I believe in something called um, the number attraction. So you've probably all heard of numerology. It's a little bit like that, but you probably get this all the time, Claire. You know, when you're out and about and you see patterns of numbers, or you've got a favorite number, or numbers are meaningful to you. Well, I went through that sort of phase for a long time. And then I realized that each number had a specific meaning to why you would see it. So for instance, you might be driving along and you might see a car registration plate with your initials on or your name or something that's meaningful. And then I always used to clock the number next to it. And anyway, I haven't been very well. I'd had uh, chronic anemia and I was recuperating from that. And I thought, oh, I started writing a book about numbers and uh, number attraction and the meanings of certain numbers. And I just got that project back out when I was recuperating. And I started to channel the information I believe from the universe about the numbers between one and a thousand and what it meant. And very quickly, um, what I received from the universe and my spirit guides was that it's called universal number attraction. So I called it life by numbers because it is about your life. So it's not really like an angel book or anything like that, which of course I love that kind of subject, but it's very sort of more down to earth in the fact of it will give you some clarity over a problem or it will push you in a certain direction, or it will give you a kick up the backside if you need it. So it's quite a plain talking book, but it is all about noticing those numbers and referring to them and seeing what your message is. So you can just flick through the book and just stop on a number. You know, you might be drawn to a certain number, you can look that up, or you might have been in the supermarket and the one day I went in and I only bought a couple of little bits and it came to £1.23 and I thought, oh, one, two, three. two, three. I've got to look that up in my book. What does that mean today? So it's really handy. Um, and I know some psychics and mediums use it on YouTube or on Facebook Live. So people choose a number and then they give the, the meaning. So it's a good starting point for a reading because you can expand on the message or you might get two or three numbers that you want to put together. So you've got a longer message. So, so that's how that came about. And I was really honoured because it's been an Amazon bestseller three times. So that's really was exciting for me um, to have that happen. Um, and then I was inspired to release um, some oracle cards, which are called Live Your Best Life. And I put the back of the cards so it matched the book. Oh, so it's sort of you get, like I have a set of, of um, cards and a book then. And they're very, again, very clear messages, very clear photographs. 
different things that are going on for you. 52 cards in the pack. So there's plenty of cards to sort of use in a reading. You can mix them with other cards if you want. You can do quite a concise reading from them. And then I just, just flicking through and, and this one has jumped out at me. The road ahead is clear. You see Oh, nice. And I just thought, oh, you need that today, Claire. <laughs> ah, yay! <laughs> so, Exciting so, card. Yeah, the photographs were are literally taken um, by my children, and, and that's one taken by my nephew, Joe. That's my crystal ball there. Oh, wow. That was taken on the Malvern Hills, and you can actually see the reflection of the hills in the in the actual crystal ball so they're very exciting photographs that one was taken in switzerland see past any obstacles so they've been taken all over europe and, and all over the world really there's some here from pakistan and that really is because my children are such adventure seekers they go off well they did go off all over the place um obviously that's been a little bit curtailed at the moment and i felt that the photographs they were taking particularly by my son's girlfriend molly she she's quite um uh, very professional with her equipment and her, her cameras and and my nephew joe is actually a professional photographer but i just felt that the pictures needed to be seen you know and they were just being wasted they, they were far more than holiday snaps and there's so much detail in the pictures and i know that when i looked at each picture the words and the meaning just came to me and so i turned those into a, a deck of cards so so that that's what i've been up to over the last sort of four or five years <laughs> that's a really beautiful idea beth and i love how like the family are in on the project as well yeah. like co-creating this beautiful yes. deck that i really really like that so can people get um your cards and your book from amazon because you mentioned amazon yeah the book the book is available on amazon just type in life by numbers elizabeth barber the cards um I'm trying to get those on Amazon. I just haven't got round to it yet with everything that's been going on. So the best thing to do if you want a deck of cards is to just contact me directly. I've got a website called Psychic Beth. Um, so if you go on there, you can or Google me, you'll find me. And you can just get a pack of those directly from me. Or I do a special offer of the cards in the book and you save £5. So the book's £10, the cards are 20 or I put it together for 25 with free postage. So it makes a great present or for somebody who's a little bit curious, or even if you're just starting to learn more about doing readings or psychic things, they can also be used from somebody who hasn't got previous experience, as well as somebody who's established. So I've tried to make them um, cover everybody's needs really in yeah. that respect. Universal cards. Well, I know this is supposed to be angel conversations, but you have just confirmed something for me without even knowing it. So I'm going to tell you this incredible story that happened um, not yesterday, the day before. Oh, it was Sunday. It was Sunday. And you might have seen on YouTube and Instagram every Sunday I do a, a, a reading for the week ahead. It's um, yeah. a weekly yeah. reading. And this Sunday, uh, my husband said we got up really early and he said, do you want to go to the park for breakfast? There's this amazing cafe in the middle of the park. It's incredible. So I said, yeah. And I thought, why it's so early? I mean, we were out before nine o'clock. I thought, I'm going to take my tripod and film my reading in the park. I thought that'd be really nice. Yeah. So we had our breakfast. My husband and the kids went off just on the swings and stuff. And I went into these gardens. Now, these gardens are somewhere that I spent a lot of time as a childhood. Like, my nan loved these gardens. And we actually sprinkled her ashes there Aww. because she loved it so much. Yeah. And I'm walking through these gardens, and I went a bit of a different way for some reason. And there's these big metal gates. And something caught my eye. And in the, on the gate, someone had got a load of old photographs, laminated them, and then used cable ties to just put them on the gate. 
But one photo caught my eye in particular. And it, it actually looked like me. <laughs> it was like absolute doubles of me, but the photo was black and white. And the girl in the photo um, had, had like 60s outfit on. So I thought, that's my mum. And, you know, my mum passed yeah. away in yeah. 2020. Yeah. And so I did my reading and everything, and it wouldn't leave my mind. I was convinced that that photograph was my mum. So anyway, on the evening, I'm in the bath. It's 10 to 10 at night, and I just this like overwhelming feeling came over me that I needed to get the photo. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if you were allowed to take them. Or, it was as if they were like, take them if you know who it is, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yes, absolutely. So my husband is buttering toast downstairs and I come out the bath I said I need to go and get that photo now so he's like all right we'll go and get it it was pouring <laughs> down with rain I took my scissors wandering through the park got the photograph and I sent it to my mum's best friend who knew her as a child because you know like I can remember what the kids looked like when I was in nursery and yes I know what people look like absolutely um, but all of my older generation family they've all passed away now so there was like no one to ask but yeah. I knew it was her and I asked if it was her and I got yeah it was and the picture I'm going to show you it it's the absolute double of my youngest daughter like me and her you look at photos of us as a kid and you don't know who's who who's who yeah yeah um but I'll, I'll just quickly show you the the photo it's giving me shivers when you're telling me about it so that is oh, my that? mum. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it's and making me go. That's there. my nan on the bench in the background. So anyway, this is where you <laughs> just give me a sign. This is where you just give me a sign now. So I sent the picture to my younger sisters and was saying, you know, do you think this is my mum? And I was like, mum, if that's you, give me a sign. And then on Instagram... This was in my news feed. Oh, wow! <laughs> this was my mum's favourite song. Oh, my oh that's making me get good. Yeah. That was my mum's favourite song. It was in my news feed. Oh, wow. With the peacock. And that was yesterday. I asked for the sign yesterday, got that. And now you have just showed me your cards. And your book with a peacock, with the peacock. feather. Yeah, so that is definitely... Is that in you know, your mum's letting you know that she's yeah. watching over you and supporting you and, and she's doing well in spirit. Yeah, isn't that a miracle to get yes. that photograph? It's an mm. absolute miracle. Like, that photo means the world to me. I was That's so... Incredible. It's just incredible. And this is a perfect it's example beautiful. of how we get signs. It's purely how spirit often work. They put us in the right place at the right time so things become synchronised. And isn't it strange that you were kind of on your own, you know, you said to your husband, your kids, you go off in the park and play and do things, and you wandered into a different part of the garden that you wouldn't normally go to. You had that feeling, that inspiration, that intuition to go off and wonder in a different direction because spirit were pulling you there. So you were really listening to those intuitive thoughts and that connection you've got with your mom yeah. in the spirit world. And I just think that is such a magical story, but also proof and validation. And even though we do this work, Claire, and that we give validation to other people, um, to get it directly ourselves is really pure and it really knows that we're, you know you're on the right track in what you're doing and you're being supported you know with with your work and your personal life as well so that is just that's that's just such a beautiful beautiful thing to happen to you you must have felt incredible and really blessed I did. What a sign! What a sign! It feels like an incredible gift. It, it mm. really really does and. You know, we do this work day in, day out, but when it's somebody so close to you, yes, um, it, it can be a bit more difficult. So, mm. um, 
it was just so nice. It just feels like a, a really, really big miracle. Like who even mm. put that photograph there? I have no idea who put it there. The fact that I was there, it's not somewhere I usually go, but I spent a lot of my childhood there and so did my mum with my nan. So it's a special place for yeah. really the, the ladies within your family by the sound of it, the, the yeah. feminine energy. Um, and then for your mum to be in the background of the photograph as well it would be really lovely to know who put those photographs there who was inspired to collect all these pictures and yeah. to hang them onto you know onto the gate and have you sort of put that on facebook have you tried to find anything about who put it there because that could be somebody very linked to your link to you mom yeah and to I've not put it out there yet. I was going to ask the wardens, uh, the keepers of the, the garden. I was going to go and ask them first because um, I suppose I better tell them that I took the photograph. <laughs> um, but all the other photos, what's interesting, there's no people on the other photos. There used to really? be a, Yeah, there used to be a big mansion in the park back in the day. So all of the pictures are of this mansion and of the gardens, how they used to look, how the pond that's so now locked up. A bit like a, like a step back in time to yeah. that era where yeah. and showing those changes. And your mum must have been playing in the park at that point when those pictures were taken. Yeah. And maybe yeah. was just in a, on the same roll of film and somebody has, you know, kept that yeah. and put those all together. And, and how amazing that, that was the only person on, on all that collection of yeah. photos was put there. It was it caught my eye straight away. I was just drawn to it. I was I, it was the first one that I looked at, and then I thought, is that me? And then I thought, no, it's black and white. You're not that old, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> As you're telling me that, I keep hearing the names Helen and Maureen. So I need to pass that on to you. So I don't know if that's significant yet. But do remember, as you're telling me, that is coming to me. Yeah. So just remember those names. Yeah. yeah. Well, they might be linked to whoever took the, the photograph. It so. does. See if you can do a little bit of um, digging around. And it, Facebook is so good these days to connect people and to, you know, go onto a group that's a local group and somebody will know what's gone on there. Yeah. And you might find... If you put, you know, about your mom and your mom's name, people will pop up and say, oh, yeah, I knew your mom, or we went to school together. And then you start to get even more layers yeah. of this story. Um, that will. I just feel like it hasn't quite ended, if that makes sense. Like, there's more, there's more to come. Yeah, well, there's there probably more. is. She's up to all kinds, you know. I think she's, like, seriously trying to be a spirit guide now. <laughs> because... A couple of weeks ago, my younger sister's car got stolen and my mum told me what to do and I actually got yeah. it back. It was really what quite is? bizarre, um, but she told me to post on Facebook. And I don't, I'm like, mum, I've already posted it on Facebook. I'm not putting it on again. She's saying, no, put it on Facebook and stress in it that the car is still in St. Helens. So I'm like, what? So I thought, I'll just do what she's saying because she was adamant that I put it on Facebook as saying this car is in St. Helens. So of course all my friends and are sharing it and people are actually looking in their own streets to see if this if car's it, uh... there. And they found the car. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, my mum said to me, she, th this, this is actually my mum's Oracle deck. I bought them oh, for oh, her. They are, I know. Like, and uh, I actually inherited them back. But she said to me when I was first time in my younger sister, she said, pick our Sarah one of these cards. And you know, we've got how many decks have we got? Beth, we've got tons. And yeah, so I, I did what she said. I pulled a card for my sister. And it was the Hello from Heaven one that came oh, out. I know it I know it, yeah. yeah and it was saying everything's going to be okay. So my sister was like, totally believe in them that my mum was on board and you know not only did she get a, a car back but everything that they'd stole from inside a house 
she got everything back and, and my mum said I moved heaven and earth for our Sarah that day I was like oh, wow. <laughs> oh, amazing yeah. isn't it funny that I said to you the name Helen and then you said St Helens ah uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one yeah. of my spirit guides is uh, called Helena oh really um, yeah yeah and she likes to make herself known she she comes out a lot especially on radio <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh Helen wants to say something but now it's me mum mum wants to say something so but anyway so this is all amazing so you are spirit medium but what about angels so do you have conversations with angels as well as spirits all the time I'm a big believer in the angelic realm I know we've got our sort of common angels like Archangel Michael to protect you and Archangel Raphael for the healing but I try to look at um, more research of other angels as well and why we would use them and what who we would call in for what reason and I'm, I'm always talking about things like the car parking angels or whatever it is and the first thing I say to anybody when they've got a problem especially in my family I'll go have you asked your angels for help with that yeah and they go no and I go well that's the first thing to do ask your angels because the right one will step forward whether you know their name or not just be open for them to come in and help and assist the other thing which I really love Claire is I like little um sort of little charms and things like that or little pin brooches or jewelry that's got angels on it because i feel that you are inviting them in then without asking that you you like giving that permission and i'll tell you a funny story that happened to me uh in 2006 i was going um on an airplane for the very first time and i've got a fear of flying i've, I've never wanted to go on a plane anyway i really wanted to go to the usa because I wanted to go to the I Can Do It conference in Florida was one of the reasons. Um, not the only reason, but it was part of it. And I was so frightened about getting on the plane. I took with me um, a brand new pack of Saints and Angels Oracle cards by Doreen Virtue, brand new and sealed. And what I thought to myself was to distract me I can go, I can open the cards, I can read the book, I can look all through them. Not that I tend to read the book much, I always go with my own intuition. But I thought that's going to be a great way of keeping my mind calm in a stressful situation. So, sort of getting ready, you're in the airport, I was getting, I could feel myself getting really panicky and anxious. And the plane kept being delayed. There was a problem and then I started going into the mode of thinking this plane's been delayed for a reason because I'm not meant to get on it and I started getting more and more anxious it was delayed again and, and it was so many hours delayed that then they started giving you the meal vouchers to go and get yourself something to eat and a drink and you know and in my head I'm like oh my god there's a mechanical problem maybe you know and, and I was really getting stressed Anyway, my, um, the person I was with at the time went off, left me on my own, so that made it worse. So I was sitting, like, having a drink, and I thought, I don't know what to do. I think I'm, I'm just gonna, I just feel like I'm going to go home. I, I don't think I'm going to get on and go. And, you know, and, and I thought, no, I know what to do. I'm just going to get these brand new set of cards out. I'll open them while I'm sitting here, and I'll ask the angels, what, what shall I do? You know, what shall I do? Got the cards out shuffled them put them on my heart chakra and told them that you know i wanted them to help me give me advice and all the rest of it and i shuffled them and a card flipped itself out the pack as they often do and you'll never guess what card it was claire it was saint christopher safe oh wow it was the safe it's making me go funny just telling you it was the safe travel card. It was St. Christopher out of, out of that deck, out of the Saints and Angels. And I stopped worrying. It lifted. I thought, no, it's just been delayed. Stop overthinking it and analysing. Spirit have just said to you, you are safe. And I just literally felt myself like relax and think, no. I wasn't completely comfortable with the concept. But 
I got on the plane and went and had a marvellous time at the I Can Do It, you know, um, conference. And I would have never have missed that when I realised what I could have given up because I saw um, Dr. Wayne Dyer there, Sylvia Brown, uh, Doreen Virtue, Dr. Stephen Farmer, Esther and Jerry Hicks were there, Cheryl Richardson. Oh, and I've probably missed a load of people off that list, but really wonderful, inspiring people that we can learn so much from. So that really gave me great comfort and I felt that that was direct, angelic intervention. So my experience um, with angels really is that I'm always asking them for guidance, for symbols, for signs, for assistance. And I trust that that comes. And I think that you have to ask them. You know, I think it's important that you either got a little sign like a little angel brooch or something, but just ask that I invite you in to assist me when it is appropriate to do so. And sometimes I know people may think it's silly to, why would you bother asking an angel to help you park your car? Surely they're there for the bigger things in life. And I think, no, they're there for everything, whether it's big, or whether it's small and it can be very inconvenient and stressful if you can't find somewhere to park particularly if you're trying to get an appointment or you're gonna you're late or whatever it might be or you're rubbish at parking your car so you need a great big space <laughs> which often is the case with me you know I think oh give me an end space don't let me maneuver too far you know and the funny thing is I kind of have a picture sometimes if I know where I'm going about where I would like to park, like an easy place to park where I don't have to maneuver too much. So I ask that and often um, that is what happens. And my dad made me laugh this morning because his, his car was a failed BMOT yesterday and it was going back today because work had been done and it had got to be retested. And he said to me, he said, can you ask the angels like to make sure that it will pass and it is OK? And I thought, yeah, it rubs off on other people when they have their own experience. And it might be something little like you start off with the car park angel and park your car. When they realise it works, then you sort of get into it and then you can build upon that and ask for their assistance in every way. My niece has recently done her exams, you know, she's just left school, and I kept saying to her, ask Zadkiel, ask Archangel Gabriel to come and help you with your exams, know that they'll support you and give you guidance, and, and she's very open to it. And I think a lot of young people are quite open to it as well. So I love working with them. I've never really felt that, it's my domain to, uh, what's the word, maybe write about them or do a, a deck. I've kind of gone off other routes for me. It's like, I feel like other people can do that better than me, if that makes sense, like yourself and, and other people who know so much about the angels and work with them. For me, it's more like I do a lot of work with animal, uh, being an animal psychic and a pet psychic. So I feel that that's, my niche or expertise yeah. and my number book and things like that but I am a big believer and I, I love the angels and I love anything that's got an angel on it so I'll often buy a little statue or something to put in my home that represents it or little um, candle holders I love angel candle holders so you've got the angel and you can light the candle and those can feel very spiritual or if you're marking an occasion like a birthday or an anniversary or maybe somebody's passed away and it would be their birthday I use my little angel candle holder and light the candle and, and I feel that that's quite sacred and quite special and I'm sure lots of people um, have those kind of feelings oh that's beautiful that's amazing I had all mine lit at the side of me. I've got a little oh, angel altar at the side of my desk, but it's so hot. I've had to blow them all out. <laughs> yeah. It's really warm here today. I've just got one lit, but I don't move it. It's nearly, um, it's nearly at the end now. Just a yeah, you don't want any, any wax spilling anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
that's how I kind of perceive it. I know they're with me. I, I like to talk to them. And, and if I'm in trouble with anything, I say, come and help me, you know, come and help me. I protect myself every time I go out in the car and say, you know, watch over the car, watch over the road ahead. And those little practices, you know, start to become very automatic and very natural. But for me, I'm more, you know, my my sort of line of things is, is doing the pet psychic work and the personal readings for people. I know that you've got a beautiful book. Your angel book is amazing. And I was so delighted to receive that from you. And um, you delve in beautifully and go into new realms of things that I didn't know about. So I feel like I've learned a lot from you. Oh, well, thank you. Um, but what I wanted to ask you is, so when you see an angel, like, how do you see it? What is your psychic clue, which is the most strongest? So do you hear them? Does it drop in? Do you see them? what how do you receive angel guidance i would say i'm very clear audience so i often hear quite a lot so i feel that i hear words or phrases i often just get the feeling of a presence you know a bit like somebody giving you a hug or the warmth that would come from being a, within a beautiful you know if you meet somebody who you really like and they're, and they're really kind so and beautiful and they give you a hug and it feels like really warm and special that kind of feeling is the only way i can liken it to I know a lot of people have said that they hear beautiful angelic music sometimes i haven't really ever experienced that i'm open to it and i'd love to um, but I tend to get words, phrases, I get things like, don't worry, we're with you, uh, stay calm, it's going to be okay. I feel like I get a lot of reassurance um, from them. And then I also would question sometimes, you know, if there's a decision to make, am I doing the right thing? And often I will listen to that. It's like an internal voice, you know, or a feeling, or I will say, would just show me a sign of, of where to go or what to do and then something will happen something will pop up or somebody will ring me and say something so i very much trust that they're with it but i would say claire audient from yeah. a strongest then then I, I would feel them the visions that i've had really i haven't like seen a complete like face or anything like that I just tend to literally see like feathers, wings and feathers. I tend to see that, you know, like the actual shape. Um, and I, unfortunately, I, I've had two um, parrots that have both passed away, unfortunately. And often I would look at when, when my parrot had put his wings out, like the shape around like the bone structure in the neck and the way the feathers sort of fall in alignment and i see that in my mind when i'm connecting to the angels i kind of see like those wings and and they are so um what we associate really with angels we talk about angel wings and and i'm drawn to that so if ever i see um a bit of jewelry with wings on or that sort of emblem or a picture i'm like oh yeah i'll have that thanks yeah. but, you know what I, mean? I feel yeah. very connected in that way and i do look out for the usual things you know the white feathers um and sometimes you can be walking around and one just floats in front of you or even when you're driving the car you might be at the lights or something you see one and i think oh there's the angels watching watching yeah. over me yeah, you know yeah. keeping us safe so i do look for their signs yeah and i feel very um comforted and reassured when I see those as well. I think I sat on an angel feather when I walked in. I don't know if it's still there. I can't see it now. I walked into my office before I spoke to you and there was a, oh, hang on, I can see it. There was a white feather that's on the floor. I should collect them, look at that. Oh, yay. That was so on the floor, but it was on the chair. Today. It was on the chair when I walked in and I meant to put it somewhere and I'd forgotten and thought, oh, I must be sat on it and it was on, it was on the floor. So, that's the sign for us today, Claire, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Do you know, like, Claire audience as well, some people think that it's just being able to hear an external voice, but 
clear audience comes in a song on the radio or a conversation that someone else is having uh, so yeah. it, it expands beyond that so it you know sometimes people think that they're not receiving divine guidance because they're expecting it to be in a specific way and that's the whole point of these uh, this series that i'm creating because i want people to open up to what they receive and to validate it and not just think oh well i don't see an angel physically so i'm not doing it right or i can't do it yeah. it can be very subtle but i do want to quickly say that you know when you said about hearing angelic music well that happened to me once really and it was so profound it was one of the most incredible experiences in my entire life so i must have been about i must have been about 21 because I know where I was living at the time. I didn't live there for long. And I was experiencing a lot of astral projection. I've always ex experienced it through being a kid. But because I was raised going to church, I was told that um, it was devil's work and I shouldn't do it. But I didn't know how to not do it, you know. Yeah. Um, so it made me a little bit scared of it. So I learned this technique that if I was out of the body, if I think about my big toe, it brings me back and I wake up. Yeah yes so anyway i thought there must be a reason why i'm having so much astral projection i was literally waking up floating around the bedroom seeing my body in the bed so but i i decided that one night i'm not going to wake myself up and i'm just gonna go with it go with the floor and see what happens so i'm there floating above the bed i can see john lay down next to me and nothing was happening. So I said, God, what's the point in this? I'm, I'm actually bored. I may as well go to sleep. And the door was closed and I seen this light coming from underneath the door. And I heard the song Amazing Grace being sang from behind the door. It was more than one voice. It was so beautiful. And I could just feel waves of energy, just like, like a current of energy going through me. Anyway, I thought nothing of it. That was kind of all that happened. And the next day I got this CD and I'd be, at the weekend I'd been watching this band called Roots Maneuver. It yes. Was, it was just a concert in Liverpool. I'd never um, heard of them before. And I got in the car and voice in my head, put number seven on. So I'm going to work the next morning after this experience, put number seven on. The song is called Sinny Sin Sins. This is like rap music. <laughs> and halfway through the song, he says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, wow. I'm just like, I still get goosebumps now, yeah. 20 years later, retelling that story. And when I got into work, at the time, I was giving massages and teaching meditation at the YWCA, the Young Women's Association, yeah. so yeah. teen mums and um, excluded from school, vulnerable women. And so no one was like really into what I am I was mm. into at the time. Yes. And someone had bought me a book when I got there and it was called The Astral Projection Handbook. Wow. So there was um, just so much synchronicity. Doing, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that I've never heard Angel. I'm convinced it was Angels that sang Amazing Grace, and I loved it so much that I walked down the aisle to the instrumental of Amazing Grace because did it, you? Yeah, it it just that is an experience that so I will never forget. It was incredible. Um, so I just thought I'd share that. It's amazing how these stories and memories come up when I'm having these angel conversations with people. Um, there's a lot of stories. Thank you, Angels. <laughs> thank you Angel. so well beth it was so incredible to have you on the show can you just quickly tell the watchers or the listeners how to get in touch with you and again what you offer and where they can get it Absolutely. I've got a website called psychicbeth.com. So easy to find me on there or Facebook. There's a psychic Beth group. I mean, in, on Instagram, it's Elizabeth Lee Crowther underscore psychic. Obviously, the book is on 
Amazon or contact me if you want the um, Oracle cards as well. And you may have seen me recently on this morning. I've been on there three times on the TV and then I went on to Martin and Roman's Sunday Best. So I do a lot of um, psychic work, which is exciting to do. And I've been very lucky to have been on those programs doing that work. So I know a lot of people chat to me about their pets and animals and what is going on for them so it tells you a little bit more about that side of things on the website if that's something you, you're interested in but the best thing to do really is to take a listen to the radio show on pulse talk radio uh, which is on every every wednesday between 6 and 8 p.m because we have some fascinating guests on there including yourself claire a lot of people on there are mediums and psychics or holistic healers and they will also do readings and we do free readings on there every week so everybody can experience a card reading or a pet reading you know all you have to do is message or text in with your name and you will have a free reading on there and so I've been really lucky to have been doing a radio show now for over 10 years because I used to do it um, on the bridge radio which was in Stourbridge in the West Midlands I started it on there for five years and then I've continued now on PulseTalkRadio.com so it's been uh, quite an adventure really Claire but I've really enjoyed chatting to you today thank you for having me I've loved it thank you so so much and I will see you on your radio soon and I will <laughs> mutual friend the lovely Karen Kate she's off oh, I love Karen yes. She well. is, absolutely. Yeah, come back soon, um, Claire. <laughs> I will do. All right, everyone, thank you so much. And do let me know, who would you like to see me interviewing on Angel Conversations? See you soon.